I'll just give you a little quick recap of who uh, John is. We have a, a little, little slide there. He was one of the apostles of Jesus, the longest living apostle. He was the apostle of love. You guys remember that last week? You know, not, not the Barry White style. He was, he was the love of Jesus, apostle of love. I just liked that. I thought it was cool. A nickname, Son of Thunder, so that was not the Apostle of Love, but after walking three years with Jesus, he had some experiences that changed his name and his life. And uh, why is he writing this letter we discovered last week is because he wants his experience with Jesus to impact our experience. A little Facebook status update, this little reminder there. Uh, and he wants us to find that complete joy, that double joy that we found in communion with the Father through the Son, Jesus. So... Here we are, we're going to go to verse 5 tonight from the message again. I'm going to read this to you, and I want you just to think about the Apostle John writing these words to us, all right? So we're going to bless this time as we go into your word. Speak to our hearts. Amen. Verse 5. This, in essence, is the message we have heard from Christ, and we are passing on to you. God is light, pure light. There's not a trace of darkness in him. If we claim that we have experienced a shared life with him, and continue to stumble around in the dark, we're obviously lying to our teeth. We're not living what we claim. But if we walk in the light, God himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another. As the sacrificed blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us, purges us of all of our sin. It's a good passage there. You guys familiar with this passage? It's, a, it's a, one of my favorites in all of scripture. And I really believe we find the answer to why we're here in this passage. And I'm going to tell you real quick, guys. The answer to why we're here is to moon people. Yes. To moon people. You guys aren't laughing. This is, that's supposed to be a joke. Yeah, okay. Well, before you, you know, blame me for last year heresy here or sexual harassment, let me tell you about my trip to Lake Berryessa, okay? Ready? Lake Berryessa. You guys discovered Lake Berryessa yet? 20 minutes from UC Davis is this beautiful lake, Lake Berryessa. I have a little picture here for you uh, of Lake Berryessa. This is really cool. Okay, that is called the Glory Hole. That's nothing to do with what I just said a few minutes ago. But uh, that, is, that is there at, at uh, Lake Berryessa. It's a, it's a man-made lake. They have a dam there. And I'm not swearing. A, there's a dam there. It makes this little thing happen. But uh, boy, nobody's going to come back after that. All right. But uh, Lake Berryessa is a wonderful little getaway that I discovered the spring of my freshman year. And I'm giving you the secret right here from up front. Fall, quarter, spring. You don't have to wait till spring. Lake Berryessa is the place to go when you need to get away, get away from the campus life, just get out in nature, enjoy some time with Jesus. Actually, my first time there was with my wife. Little did I know that uh, you know she would later be my future wife. She was just visiting the campus. I met her at a restaurant a few days earlier, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you know, five years later, finally we had a guest to pursue her. But uh, anyway, Lake Berryessa is very special to me. Very, very special to me. And uh, Jen was not part of the story. There was a few other people involved. My fellow DCFers, we took a little summer trip my sophomore year at Lake Berryessa. And uh, those of you who know Berryessa, uh, you have to go through some interesting trails to get down to the lake. And we went for a night swim. It was like a 100 degree weather, a lot like today. And the water gets really warm at Lake Berryessa when it's hot outside. And uh, I was in the middle of summer orientation. Yeah, UC Davis hired me to represent them in summer orientation. Yeah, they didn't want me, and I worked for them, huh? Anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I was, I was pretty uh, beat after uh, being with freshmen all day. A lot of freshmen. Yes. I do. I really do. Everyone knows that here. Uh, but yeah. But I need a little dip in the lake. I need some refreshing. And we went down that, that crazy little trail. and. I couldn't see a thing. It was so dark. One of my friends, he was way up ahead. He was kind of like the Matt Ellis of my DCF generation. You know, he was, he was leading the pack, had the flashlight. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to, you know, follow the like ten people in front of these footsteps. And I, man, I would stumble. I would stumble. I, I couldn't. It was really slippery. Some parts get a little muddy. And uh, but we finally made it down to that lake, and it was so refreshing. It was so worth it. And uh, you know, I I noticed something while we were floating around in the in the, in the lake there. Out of nowhere, I started to see the moon. I've never seen this before. I still haven't seen it to this day, but it sure happens all the time. I'm just not aware. But I saw the moon begin to rise up into the sky. I don't know if we were there late at night or something like that. But uh, it was hidden behind a hill. That's why it was so, so dark. 
And it was like one of those harvest moons, you know, like James and the Giant Peach. Remember that story? Yeah, it was just gigantic. And it just started raising up into the sky. I'm just floating on the lake, just going, Jesus is coming. <laughs> the moon is turning red. No, I, didn't know. But, uh, I got pretty excited. I mean, this, this magical moment of rest. And, and I saw the whole lake just begin to light up. And needless to say, and my journey back up to our car, I, I didn't need Matt's flashlight, it was actually his name, it was Adam, but I didn't need Adam's flashlight. We could see everything. It was just, the whole sky was lit up because of that moon. So what am I trying to say to you guys about the moon here? And Barry, I said, yeah, there's no mooning involved like Animal House, you know, fraternity boy thing. No, I'm not immature here at DCF, not usually. Um, but uh, yes. The, the moon lit up Berryessa, and I believe, and we see here, that God lights up the darkness. Look at the scripture. This, in essence, is the message we heard from Christ, and we are passing on to you. God is light, pure light. There's not a trace of darkness in him. John is passing the message that he learned from Christ to us, that God is light, and God is lighting up the darkness around us. And my question is, is God lighting up the darkness around you, through you? Is he, are you being the moon unto others in the dark? Lighting, lighting up, bringing his light. Uh, so that's the first question time. We're going to go real quick here, friends. But ask that question in your heart, even now. Is God lighting up the darkness around you? Are you is God using you to bring his light to others? So yeah, you might still be asking, okay, well, what does that have to do with why I am here at UC Davis? And uh, I really believe... You know, if God is light, and it's his job to bring the light, you know, how does he do that? Well, do you guys know about the properties of the moon? Some scientists here in the house. I study communication, so I get on Wikipedia today. <laughs> I know it's elementary here, right? You know, I barely got on the UC Davis, right? But uh, the properties of the moon, without the sun, the moon is just a big old rock, right, in the sky. It's, it's cold, and it's dark. But when the moon reflects the sun, that's why we have this beaming uh, giant peach, like my experience there in the sky there. Uh, and uh, anybody know any other properties of the moon? Help me out here, a simple interaction. I think I need some of that right now. What do you guys know? Okay. It affects the tide. It affects the tide, oh, that's right. Yeah. You guys all knew that about the reflection of the sun, right? That was like, whoa, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But all the moon's job is to reflect the sun. That's what it is. It's not, it's not worried about the darkness. It really isn't. It doesn't freak out, you know. It doesn't freak out when it goes through its different phases. Oh, I'm just a sleeper. Oh, no. You know? I'm a quarter moon. My life is over. No. There is the man of the moon, so he probably has feelings, right? Uh, the moon, it just reflects the light. That's all it does. So yes, the reason we are here is to bring light to darkness, as Christ did. But God uses us to show his light. Yeah, you got a picture there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, which brings me to our point. The only thing that we have to worry about is doing the moonwalk. Oh, yes. Let's read the passage here. But if we walk in the light, God himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another as the sacrifice blood of Jesus, God's son, purchases, purchases all our sin. We need to walk in the light, friends. We need to actively reflect his light through walking in relationship with Christ. Yeah, we're, we have relationship uh, with him through, the, through the, the, the blood of Jesus that was sacrificed for us. But you know, being on a walk, you sometimes have some good conversation. You guys ever take walks with your friends? Yeah. yeah we're, my wife, we like to take walks here and there. And especially, okay, come on, let's get this baby going. Let's go walk around, right? <laughs> Uh, so, but they actually recommend that, okay? Uh, but walking is a great way to build a relationship. And I believe that that is all our responsibility, is to walk with Christ, to walk in relationship with Him, and let His light reflect off of our lives. Doing the moonwalk. You guys can do it. All right? And the benefit of it, friends, you can see in this passage here, is that we get to do the moonwalk together. Oh yeah, just like a Michael Jackson tribute in Seattle or San Francisco. You remember that last year? Michael Jackson passed. There's groups of people doing the moonwalk together. I can't do it. But <laughs> there is benefit of walking the light because we're not standing alone, but we're standing with God and with each other. 
It's the question. Are you walking in the light? Are you doing the moonwalk? Are you turning toward the sun to reflect his light? Yeah. And the big question I asked this last week in another way, will you do the moonwalk with us? That's what we're looking for, journeying together in this community. So, you know, I got here to this campus, and it, it took me a, a while to realize, you know, the purpose that I had here. Uh, but I quickly found it, you know. I wasn't here because someone in Iraq hit the wrong button, or because my mom made a red-headed, fiery phone call. But God had a plan, he had a purpose. And I, I believe with all my heart that he's brought each one of you to this campus for divine reason and purpose. There, there is a, a destiny that he has for each one of us on this campus. And this is one of my favorite parts about UC Davis is the, the motto we have here. The whole UC system. Maybe some of you don't know this, but it is straight from Scripture. And you can see it right there. The motto of UC Davis is, let there be light. And I, I, I got this straight from the, the university website. The motto of the University of California is, let there be light. A reference to the creation event of Genesis 1 and the light of truth that dispels the darkness of ignorance and falsehood. Whoa! I got goosebumps. Just think about that. There is a destiny for this campus, and for each one of you. I believe, you know, if you are already bearing the name of a Christian, a follower of Jesus, you're here to reflect this light. And all that is is just walking in relationship with Him. I don't know what kind of pressure that you've had before, maybe in your faith. Like, I gotta do something. I gotta do something for God. Just walk with Him. Do the moonwalk. Have fun with Jesus, and let Him reflect His light around you, and let there be light. You know, I was doing a little more research because I just love this seal so much. This seal uh, started 100 years ago. It was officially became the university seal. And it's uh, been you know, 100 years, 1910 is when it first, first came out. It was originally created in 1868, the, the motto, Let There Be Light. And it was under the, uh, it was, a uh, let me just read it. It was patterned after the great New England colleges, offering a thoroughly classical curriculum under the pervading influence and spirit of the Christian religion. The head of the college was Reverend Henry Durant of Yale, who later became the first president of the University of California. The first president of our university system was a reverend, a pastor. Yeah. Hey, you know, maybe I could uh, climb the corporate ladder here. <laughs> if somebody in Morocco hit the wrong button and bought a big button, boom! But, uh, friends, it's so cool. It's time to return our university back to its ancient roots. You know, a hundred years is up. It's time for a new beginning, a new time. And uh, I believe that this phrase is not going to just be a, a motto of the past, but that we as the Davis Christian Fellowship community and all the Christians on campus, wasn't it so beautiful last Sunday night? I believe we're here to be light. To let there be light. So again, are you reflecting his light? Are you ready to moonwalk with us? Or you just need to turn your face to God, maybe for the first time, and give, it, give Jesus a chance, the Son a chance. So that's really what I got for you guys. I want to pray for us. I want to believe that this is our destiny as a community. And this is what God has for us this entire year long and years to come. Uh, at that DCF house, it's paid off. It's going to be here for as long as... Jesus, uh, until he comes back in Africa, then he'll still be there. We're going to be a ministry that declares that let there be light.